Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and this is the infotainment guide for the 2025 Mercedes E Sprinter. Now, if you have got a diesel Sprinter, this will be relatively similar to what you're experiencing on the new 2025 model. However, there are obviously some EV-specific settings on this E Sprinter, uh, notably the charging settings in this app here. However, we are gonna go through everything that you need to know about this infotainment screen and how to use it. So first things first, really decent sized screen. Um, it's a really nice wide aspect ratio. Um, the only unfortunate thing is it's quite reflective. So you can see me in the reflection and we have got a lot of black, shiny black plastic here, um, which again, you can see a lot of reflections in. However, it is a nice high red screen. Apple CarPlay looks really, really good on this screen. So let's see what we got here. So this is the main home screen. We've got three different pages here with the eSprinter app, some other options in here, which we will go through uh, in this video. Uh, top right corner is your home button, so that takes you back to this main screen. We've got the a quick shortcut to disable the speed warning alert and a shortcut to Apple CarPlay. On this side up here, we've got the 4G signal for your phone, the uh, settings or the status of Mercedes Me, which is their uh, smartphone system or tracking system. Battery level on your phone as well, the signal level on the vehicle um, as well, and then the time and date as well, just the time actually. Uh, if we swipe down from the top here, we've got the notifications tray or the control center. So we've got the notifications here with some settings. So you can choose what type of notifications you actually want. So you can group them together. You've got MB charge public, some options in there. After hours alert and smart home as well. If we go back a page. Uh, we've got the favorites here. So consumption, sound, browser and display off as well as the manual and you can add a favorite. So consumption, I noticed, doesn't actually do anything, unfortunately, uh, it's a bit unfortunate. Um, we've got the sound. So we've got some sound settings, which we will go through a bit later. Uh, got the browser, which unfortunately doesn't actually do anything uh, because this vehicle doesn't have an active data plan with Vodafone, but you can pay for that if you if this is your own vehicle. This isn't my vehicle. This is one I'm borrowing from Mercedes to do this review and this infotainment guide. Uh, display off, which is self-explanatory, then the online manual, the manual that's on the screen. So it says don't use it while driving essentially. So you've got some options in here for all the various bits and pieces. That's quite nice. And you can add a favorite as well. And then this one is your functions. So you can turn off the acoustic warning or turn it on. You can turn off lane keeping assist, all settings, open socket flap and ESP. Also, we've got this option here for a profile. So it says no user profile is active. You can activate the Mercedes Me system and you can delete your usage data. And also you can get some information about what that does. Uh, also, this favorites button, so you can, well, you can, it's a little shortcut basically, and then also search. So this search box is for the sat nav, which we'll go through as well. So the first app is the eSprinter app, um, and this tells you some basic information about how full the battery is, how fast it can charge, you can set schedules, and that sort of good stuff, really. Um, so it says 87%, 160 miles of range. The charging limit is set to 100%, and that is quite customizable, so you can say, say 50%, and it'll tell you how long it will take to charge when you plug it in. Standard program, so there are three different programs. There's none basically, just a standard charging program. Home or work, and what you do here is set a location. So you can say, when you've plugged it in, uh, it'll automatically unlock the cable at work or not, uh, and that's quite useful. So there's some good options in there. Eco charge is on or off. So it says your vehicle adjusts the charge power and the start time of your charging process based on the departure time to optimize the battery charge and still ensure that the set charge level is reached at the time of departure. Uh, so you've got next departure time and you can set that in there. It just gives you a little bit of information about saying charging power is reduced because the battery is so full. This might take longer on DC charging stations and that will reduce some blame on charging providers. And, and also going hand in hand with that is the DC maximum. So it says 47 kilowatt. Um, and it'll give you some nice information about why it might charge slower than usual. Uh, departure times, so again, it's a pre-entry climate control. You can have weekly profiles or once, quite nice there. And you can open the socket flap remotely if you want to as well. Pre-entry climate control, so that's what we just looked at, um, and some nice little options in there. Next up is navigation, so pretty self-explanatory really. We can search for things, so um, let's type in London. The eSprinter, unfortunately, does not tell you where to charge en route. So even though you might pick a destination that's a bit further away than what the, the vehicle can actually do, um, it won't tell you where to charge, but it will give you some information on where charging points are. So elsewhere in this app, apart from searching for things, you can search for restaurants or cafes. So that's quite useful there. 
Uh, if we go back a page again, got centering, so you can center the vehicle where you are. Got the media that's playing currently, got a shortcut to your phone, and yeah, that's pretty good, really. So there are some options for settings. So you've got dynamic route guidance here, uh, automatic after asking or off. Uh, you've got avoid things like motorways, Vigdete roads or Vinay roads, uh, toll roads, avoid areas, avoid ferries, pun unpaved roads, motor rails or motor rails, and uh, avoid tunnels. Got view, satellite map, free flowing traffic, traffic incidents, auto zoom, overview of route after start, POI symbols on map, uh, map color scheme you can choose or show additional information, and then messages and tones, reduced messages, detailed messages, and messages off. If we go back to the home screen here, uh, we've got the phone app. So my phone is connected via Bluetooth to the, the uh, entertainment screen. So it's, it's displayed the recent calls I've got here. Uh, we can also set another phone on here if we want to. So you can have up to two phones connected at the same time. We've got a search button, so you can search your contacts. We've got a dialing pad. Got the device management, which we just looked at there. Got CarPlay shortcuts. That will push you to the, the phone app within CarPlay, which is quite nice. Uh, and then also we have got settings, so devices and contacts, how they're displayed. The other app is the radio app. So we've got DAB, FM, and AM on the e-sprinter. Um, so we've got a nice carousel of all the radio stations displayed there. This option here allows you to view or search the different stations you've got. So you can type in a station name rather than have to scan through. This option here um, is your TA or traffic information option. This button here is the sound settings. So you can adjust the equalizer, the balance in the vehicle. So it's literally just left and right because there are two seats in this vehicle. Uh, loudness, loudness normalization, so off, low, medium, or high. And then FM, DAB, so radio announcements, uh, which are some settings in there for what types of announcement you actually want. Radio text information, frequency fix, and then also DAB slideshow. Uh, and that's pretty much it. We've got AM as well. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. The next app is media. So we have got some options in here for Bluetooth audio, Apple CarPlay, which is connected currently, and also uh, USB. So there are some USB ports in the dashboard underneath the top box, uh, and that allows you to plug whatever you want in there. So we've got some settings as well. Again, the same sort of thing as a radio app, equalizer and that sort of stuff. The next one is MB apps. Uh, so there's four options in here. We've got Mercedes Me. So I can't demo the Mercedes Me app in this video because this isn't my vehicle. It's owned by Mercedes and they've got their account set up on here. So usually what I would do is demo the app that you get, but I can't do that in this video, unfortunately. Uh, so it's owned by their internal fleets. We've got My Services, so you can set an account in there and that's not accessible really. Uh, weather, so even though the vehicle hasn't got an active data sim, we can at least view the weather. So it tells you the weather in there. You can resync everything. You can get more information about the wind direction, the temperature and the humidity. You can search for location as well. Uh, you can set a favorite. So that's what that does. You have to be a logged in user. And also settings. So you can say 48 hour display or 10 days. Uh, browser, which we looked at earlier, and also this one here. So, hey Mercedes. How can I help? What's the weather like today? Today it will be rainy in Worcester with temperatures between 9 and 18 degrees. There we go. Uh, what it can't do, unfortunately, is open windows, even though um, the information says it can. So if we look in here... Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't always work. But when I looked at it earlier, it did say that you might be able to open the windows with the voice, but you can't do it in a van. I think what they've done is ported the same software from a car, Mercedes car, over to the van, and there's certain things you can't do on that one. So that is what it is. Uh, they've got information, so... Okay, now it's opened the Hey Mercedes information. <laughs> we'll go back anyway. Information here. So energy flow. So we've got the picture of the batteries that are um, got some charging them. Uh, the motor in the rear and then also vehicle. So when you press the accelerator, it will display um, the level of pressure you're putting on the, on the pedal. Also the angle front and back and also the um, angle side to side. And there is also a two degrees button there for steering angle. So that does reflect does reflect on the display when you've got the steering set to a particular angle. That's quite nice there. Uh, we've also got settings here. So assistance, so collision avoidance, ESP, uh, electronic stability control. The system offers assistance when pulling away on wet or slippy roads and can stabilize the vehicle when braking. That's on or off. Active brake assist, so that's early, medium, or late. So it says the function can help you minimize the risk of collisions with vehicles, cyclists, or pedestrians, or reduce the effects of accidents. 
similar sort of thing is lane keeping assist. So that's currently turned off. So we'll turn it on and press settings. That's early, medium, or late. Uh, blind spot, blind spot assist. Uh, says the function monitors the areas alongside the vehicle and behind it and warns you a vehicle is already there or those approaching and that's on or off as well. Assistance, so that's traffic sign assist. So it says by pressing the mute button on the steering wheel for an extended duration, you can activate or deactivate the acoustic speed warning at any time. That's on or off. It says visual, visual and audible. And then if we go back to here, uh, we've got acoustic signal for new speed limit, that's off, which is quite good. We've also got vehicle, so open or close. Um, so you could say automatic locking or an acoustic lock. Rain sensor sensitivity is low, standard or high. Dynamic select, uh, ask when starting, which is when starting the vehicle, you'll be asked whether the drive program should be adjusted to the one selected at the end of the last journey. Uh, lights, so interior or exterior lighting. So we can say uh, there's delays or um, for the exterior lights and the interior lights. We've got system. So we've got the Mercedes voice assistant there. So let's click on settings. So it says direct commands like um, whether you're in one side of the vehicle or not. It's quite a nice little feature there. Online recognition is turned on. Contact upload for online recognition. Uh, display and display messages. So display brightness is on zero. You can rack up to five, which doesn't actually do much. Uh, activate, deactivate display. So display off, system off. And graphic goodies. So on certain special days, the graphics of the MBUX are changed a little bit. Let us surprise you. It's quite cool there. And you can just choose kilometers or miles. Languages, so you've got um, different languages in there. It's quite good. And then keyboards, keyboard languages, same sort of options in there for different keyboards. You can reset your dictionary. Control elements, so acoustic feedback is normal or off or loud. Touch control is slow or medium, we'll do medium. Uh, audio, uh, so you've got greeting tones, on or off, phone. So speech volume, ringtone volume. Uh, voice output, different volumes in there. And we've got driving recommendations during call. Audio fade out uh, when the navigation's on and radio announcements louder. Entertainment, uh, again, that's the equalizer which we looked at earlier. Internet and Bluetooth, manage internet access. So it's no data package, but it is it is there. MBUX hotspots, you can use that to connect to the Wi-Fi in the vehicle. Uh, Wi-Fi is on, Bluetooth is on. Data protection, the transmit vehicle position to Mercedes Me. So you can turn it on, if you, off, on or off if you want to. Uh, system pin, and that's, that's an option in there if you want. Time and date, uh, it's the time and date there. Great Britain, set format, address time, summer time. Software updates, there's no updates for the vehicle. It says automatically update if you need to, and you can reset everything if you want to as well. Information, so you can open the digital loaner's manual, which we looked at a bit earlier. So some options in there. System information about the VIN, the SSID for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, map data version, and legal information. And then Apple CarPlay is the last one, and that's pretty much it. So that's been a look at the infotainment system for the Mercedes E Sprinter for 2025. Again, if you've got the standard diesel Sprinter, this should be pretty similar. Uh, most of the settings are, I'd imagine, probably the same. If you've got any questions or comments, let me know in those sections down below. My name's Alex. Please subscribe to Interface Cars, and I'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.